Well, right now I want to bring in CNN's Brian Todd. Uh, he's with retired Brigadier General Peter Zwak, uh, now a Wilson Center Global Fellow uh, at the Kennan Institute. Uh, walk us through, if you can, a little bit of what's going on from the military perspective right now. Right, Wolf, the landscape of this battle is changing really by the minute in General's walk. We're very fortunate to have you here to break it down with us. Of course, many eyes are on the Battle of Kiev as Russian forces are amassing mostly in the west and approaching the city. You saw Matthew Chance's riveting segment there, that, that ambush of that Russian convoy just outside Kiev. How do you see the battle for Kiev playing out in the coming hours? Thank you. First, the first evening, uh, the Russian uh, special operations and paratroopers tried to take, uh, they took Antonov Airport. Uh, it looked like that they had a bridgehead and they were going to be rushing forces down. A lot of people expected them to go right for the center and try to catch the Ukrainians off. They didn't do it. Now they have been moving down clumsily. They've taken resistance and losses. They're now also, again, coming in now big from what we're seeing, uh, and they have a choice. Do they go for the center, the seats of government, and pay a bloody, brutal uh, uh, cost? The whole world is watching. The media is watching. Russia is increasingly watching. Uh, or do they try to encircle? But this is something that takes 70, 80,000 people to do. And the Russian force structure, I like to say, they're huge, but they're not that Big, and this is dangerous for him. All right, let's talk about uh, a little bit of the bigger picture here on the troop movements, where the Russians have captured territory, yeah. the directions that they're moving in. We do know that in Kyiv, in Mykolaiv, and yeah. in Kharkiv, the Ukrainians are putting up resistance, but the Belarusian troops could be coming yeah. in, according to our sources. How does that change the landscape of the battle? Actually, I don't think it changes it that much. Actually, I think it's the beginning of the long end of the Alexander Lukashenko regime, because most of those Belarusian troops, maybe 60, 70, 80,000 active, then, and then a quarter million, if you will, reservists, are conscripts. And the same thing as the Russian conscripts. They're now encountering fierce uh, Ukrainian resistance from Slavic brothers. I think this is, uh, Belarus had those protests in 2021. Right. I think this is the beginning of the end for him. Okay, let's talk about the, uh, the convoy of the, that we've yeah. observed here, just outside Kiev. Three-mile-long Russian convoy. Yeah. They're having problems resupplying their forward units. Yeah. Talk about that. All right, just look at this. This is, happening all, this is happening all over Ukraine. And you have these soft-skinned vehicles, again, driven mostly by conscripts, not combat troops. They need combat troops to protect them because the wolves are out there, meaning the partisans, you're going to be getting, you're going to be getting points of resistance. Don't, we got to remember that from 41 to 1944, the fiercest resistance to the Nazis in the partisan fight was over this ground in, in, uh, in Ukraine and Belarus. And, and uh, this will be really, really hard to sustain. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah. All right, well, that's, it's going to be really interesting to see if they can uh, resupply these convoys, right. get their forces ramped up in and around Kiev as the battle unfolds that's in the coming right. hours. Wolf, we're going to be watching this in real time as that yeah. battle for the capital city unfolds. Excellent, excellent analysis. Uh, General Zwak, thank you very, very much for joining us.